let's now talk about the Zen, which is one of our purposes of this tape, of, of course, of this video, of course. And so how do we introduce the concept of Zen to our clients? Well, we could think about the evolution of technology, which really, if you, if you think about other electronic products that have been out for years, when iPods first came out, they were used for playing music. But now we have evolved to the point, or, or maybe Apple has evolved to the point, where they use iPods or other companies use MP3 players for not only listening to music, but for showing movies, for um, showing TV shows, for having putting photos of your children on them and using them as photo albums, or even playing games on them. Same kind of thing has happened with cell phones. Originally, cell phones were used for listening to conversation. But now we use cell phones as cameras, we use them to play music, we use them uh, as a, a, a GPS, um, we can text people, we can um, play various games on them, and we could browse the internet on them. So what we originally designed these electronic media for has now evolved where we're using it for other things. Well, now the same thing has happened with hearing aids. Hearing aids now have a number of new functions. They're not just used for listening to somebody talk to you any longer. Hearing aids can be used to have wireless interface to other um, media. We can actually even use hearing aids as sound level meters to measure the amount of sound coming into them and coming out of them. We could use hearing aids to actually measure a person's hearing, which is technically what a sensogram is doing. It's assessing audibility for different sounds. Well, now Widex has produced hearing aids that contain fractal tones. What are fractal tones? Well, fractal tones are music-like signals that are generated by a, a, a very complicated mathematical algorithm, which I won't explain to you because I certainly don't understand it myself. But these are tones that create a melodic chain of, of signals that repeat enough so that they sound familiar and they follow all the rules that we talked about before, but they, they vary enough so that they're not predictable. So a person listening to a fractal tone can never predict what is coming exactly next. However, we want to make sure that these fractal tones don't jump in loudness or don't change dramatically in tempo or in, in, in uh, pitch. It's kind of like if listening to wind chimes. So Widex now has these fractal tones available in what they call the Zen option. The way these were put together is not in some random manner. They were put together very cleverly and with a lot of thought so that they do follow all the principles of music that you can see on your screen right now. We want to have our client have the ability to work with us so that they can self-select some of the parameters of this music, the tempo, the pitch, for example. Um, we want to make sure that we're using the element of uncertainty. So again, we don't want this to be completely predictable. At least in my mind, when something is completely predictable, it tends to trigger problems that, uh, that the technical term for them is actually called earworms. And earworms, for example, if I have difficulty sleeping at night, I tend to hear the same song running through my head over and over and over. It's an earworm. It could be a commercial jingle. It could be a song that I hear on the radio or on my stereo. But if I keep hearing that same song over and over, it interferes with my sleep pattern. So there's an element of uncertainty that you really want to have if we're going to induce passive relaxation. We don't want these tones to have rapid amplitude changes, which they don't, and we really want to induce this passive listening. So at this point, I will tell you that there are five different Zen styles or Zen tones, um, melodies, that a person can choose from. White X has chosen to call these by different colors, aqua, coral, lavender, green, and sand, and each one of these signals have different 
musical parameters to them. They can differ in terms of the pitch, they can differ in terms of how reverberant they are, they differ in terms of tonality, meaning major or minor chords, they can differ in terms of the dynamic range, how much we're going to allow for variance, and they differ in terms of the tempo or how fast or what the rhythm is that they're presented to the listener. Very importantly, is that the Zen tones are shaped be based on the sensogram, so based on the person's hearing loss. Now this is essential. If you presented a broadband noise or if you present unfiltered music to an individual who has a severe high frequency loss, they're not going to hear the high frequency components in that music or in that noise. So those components then are doing nothing for the individual. With the Zen tones, because they are run through the sensogram, and they're based on the sensogram, I should say, it's going to ensure that we're making them audible to our listeners, and it's also going to ensure that they're presented at a soft enough sensation level relative to the user's actual thresholds so that they're never going to find that these signals are interfering with conversational speech or are becoming um, too loud for them or too distracting for them. Remember, the purpose of this is not to distract the individual. You can't be distracted from a signal like that. Um, there's a number of ways you can present this concept to, to your um, clients. I'll give you just a couple of choices here. One of the things that I like to do is when I know I'm dealing with a person who has tinnitus, I will actually, without telling the person, play the Zen tones in the background very softly in my office as I'm counseling them. Presumably my counseling is helping to relax them, but certainly the Zen tones I'm hoping will relax them as well. If you're going to do something like this, of course, you don't know what their preference is. So I will tend to go, I, I select the aqua signal. You can also, however, if you decide you don't want to put this on during your counseling, you can present this concept of Zen to the client after you've completed your counseling and when you're now going to talk to them about therapeutic interventions or different strategies to help them deal with their tinnitus. So, importantly, we want to make sure, and I, I really want to emphasize this because I don't want to give you the impression that the, it's the acoustics and not the counseling that's important. It's both. So we want to make sure we're providing enough counseling to our client so that we've established the relationship between hearing loss, tinnitus, and stress. We have to convince our client, and it's, it's, we're not just whistling Dixie here, when we convince our, our clients about this, we are telling them the truth that we know that the presence of hearing loss produces tinnitus, we know that stress increases the perception of tinnitus and makes it more difficult to deal with. So anything that we could do to help the hearing loss, such as hearing aids, and anything we could do to help relieve stress, such as the Zen tones, have a beneficial prospect for our, our, our clients. We also want to explain to the client why we want to use a hearing aid that is broadband so that it, it, it stimulates a broad range of frequencies because, again, by doing this, we're providing amplification through the hearing aid through the cochlea and up into the auditory cortex so that that part of the brain has no reason to try to turn up its sensitivity to compensate for what it's not getting. We want to explain to the person why music works for helping stress and, and how it can be pot potentially useful to them. You know, our patients might say or our clients might say to us, well, why can't I simply use an iPod at home? And the reason, of course, is that the iPod is not going to correct, in most cases, for their hearing loss. It's not going to correct for differences between the two ears. It's not going to correct for differences in the frequency response of, that you need based on their audiogram configuration. So that's really the main reason for it. And, of course, the other reason is that with the Zen tones, we have reason to believe, and our research supports this, that by presenting 
tones that are not completely predictable were going to have a beneficial effect and it would be difficult to generate these signals um, through the iPod. So that's what we also want to explain to our clients that it's this unfamiliar, this, this pleasant but non-predictable signal, the fractal tones or the Zen tones, that tend to lead towards passive listening as opposed to just active listening that will distract but won't habituate in the long run.